So now we're going to discuss the data plane. This is where our data is actually sent, processed, and delivered to the downstream destination. So this is where the bulk of the work of RudderStack is happening in the server itself. The Rudder server is a Kubernetes deployed app that consists of a number of different pods. We won't get into Kubernetes right now, but Kubernetes is essentially a system that's used to deploy, scale, and manage uh, distributed apps of smaller services. So within the data plane, we're going to have a number of services. The primary service that's going to handle the ingestion of events is going to be called the gateway. So the gateway is essentially going to be receiving the events as they come in from the SDKs, the um, HTTP sources, um, or any of our other cloud or cloud extractor warehouse sources. So these, uh, this event that we're sending on the front end of user signed up is going to come into the gateway. So the gateway is handled as a separate pod very specifically so that if there are any other issues with anything else within the server, we have the gateway always available. So the server can go into what's called degraded mode, and what that means is that the gateway is up and something else in the server may be crashing, so the events are not being processed to downstream tools, but we're still ingesting them at the gateway, and so once everything comes back up, we can continue to process events without losing anything. So when events get to the gateway, the first thing that's going to happen is they're going to be stored in a Postgres database. And so you may be thinking, I thought RudderStack didn't store my event data. We don't store it long term, but we do persist it long enough to process it and send it to the downstream tools. And then eventually these tables are dropped completely, so we have no record of the data. So when the events come in to RudderStack, they're going to come into the gateway, and then the gateway is going to store them in a Postgres table. And once that's happened, it will return to the client a 200 response, which says that the event was received successfully and is now being processed. So this process, this process is designed to be very quick and very reliable from a client point of view. Once in the Rudder server, we have a number of different services that, that are a part of the data plane that will have various roles within it. Most notably, we have our transformer, which is going to be responsible for getting our data in the right format for downstream tools. And then we have the router, which is what's going to be responsible for routing all of those transformed events to the downstream destinations. We also have uh, a warehouse service, which is going to uh, treat warehouse and batch destinations a little bit differently, and we'll discuss that in a second. And then there are some other pods um, that we aren't really going to pay attention to right now for monitoring, um, event metrics, reporting, things like that. But these are going to be the main pods that we're going to discuss of how we process data in the Rudder server. So once we've ingested these events into the gateway, uh, Postgres table, we're going to have to process them. So to process them, we need to get them in the format of what the downstream tool needs. So they're going to go through the transformer, which is going to change them to the proper format, and then it's going to store them, again, temporarily in another Postgres table, but it's going to store the, the events that need to go into the downstream tools. So where we have one event coming in right here, we're going to have, in this case, four events going into the router Postgres table. And so these are going to be events that have now been transformed into the format that Salesforce or Google Analytics or Amplitude or Snowflake need to accept those events. So we'll come back to the transformer and discuss a couple of things with it in a second. But for now, we're going to continue to follow the process of these events through RudderStack. So once these events have been processed through the transformer and are in the router tables, the tables at the gateway are going to be dropped completely. So as I mentioned before, we won't have any record of those events moving forward. So we now have four different events that are being stored temporarily in the router table. That's not completely true because, as I mentioned earlier, Snowflake being a data warehouse is going to be treated a little bit differently. So it's actually going to be handled in a, in a different table. But for the purposes of this, we're going to show, it, show them here. So at this point, the router is going to take these events and going to send them out into the downstream tools. So it's going to send an event to Salesforce. It's going to send a separate event to Google Analytics a separate event to Amplitude, and then the warehouse service is going to upload our events to Snowflake on a predefined schedule. The warehouse is treated separately because of compute costs with warehouse destinations. So instead of streaming the data live to the warehouse, what we're actually going to do is the warehouse service is going to create staging files on a temporary storage platform, typically something like S3. And once those have been stored, the warehouse service itself will, on a predefined schedule by the user, will take these staging files and upload them into Snowflake in a batch process, which will save on compute costs. Um, because again, generally we're sending everything to our data warehouse, so it's going to be a large amount of volume, and we don't want to just stream that over live. So these 
at the end of this process, we've essentially sent this one user signup event in. It's been processed as needed um, and then sent to the appropriate accounts um, in its proper format.